everything will be all right. Can you type in that comment box, everything will be all right. My grandmother generation would say it like this, I got a feeling that everything will be all right. Good morning to you. I am Pastor Diaz Colors, the founder and the senior pastor of the True Friendship Church, one church in two locations, currently in Lincolnton, Georgia, and in Elberton, Georgia. And I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. For those of you on Facebook, go ahead and hit that share button. Give me your likes, your thumbs up, and I want you to put in a comment box, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here this last Sunday of 2020. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, get your heart, your mind, your spirit ready, and let's worship the Lord together on this last Sunday of 2020. Praise the Lord. Thank you, 
Hallelujah. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone it's in your presence your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood
Well, we give God praise this afternoon. Somebody shout amen. We are so thankful to God that he has brought us to the conclusion of another year. The year of 2020. And we are approaching 2021. And we have made it this far only by the grace of God. Somebody shout amen. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to the year of 2021. But if you do not change the way you live, if we do not change the way we think, if we don't change the ways of our spiritual life, the flip of a calendar doesn't mean anything. I hate to be the person to be negative or rain on your parade. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to the year of 2021. But if the nation don't repent, and we don't repent, if the church, the body of Christ, doesn't repent, I'm not afraid that we're going to see the same things that we saw this year, next year. But if we repent, you all, I said, if we repent, I believe that things can turn around. Somebody shout amen. God is not playing with us. He gave us enough time to get it right. He gave you all the way to 2019, if you will to get it right. But he has shown us who's really in charge this year. Money can't get us out of it. And prayer works, but our prayers can't get us out of this. Because when God has something assigned to our life, it's going to run its course. Somebody shout it man. All of us have been faced with many tests this year trials and tribulations and there's one person in the Bible that I believe that faced as many tests if not more tests that we have faced and that's Job and this afternoon we're going to be coming from Job chapter number 23 and we're going to see what the Lord is going to say to us this afternoon as we conclude 2020. Job chapter number 23, verse number 10. If you will, stand for the reading of God's word. If you are at home, stand for the reading of God's word. Job chapter number 23, verse number 10. Just one verse in your hearing. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. One more time. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. One more time, and maybe you are here from the Spirit of the Lord. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Underline this. When he has tested me. When he has tested me. For the next few minutes, I want to preach about it's only a test. It's only a test. You may be seated. God, we thank you. God, I pray, God, as always, that you use me as an instrument. Move me out of the way and move Jesus the Christ in the way. Have your way in this sanctuary and have your way through social media. We commend this service over into your hands. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all shouted, amen. 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 amen and amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter number 
Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 13 states, No temptation has overtaken you, except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he always makes the way of escape that you may be able to bear. I want to make sure that I am theological sound this afternoon. I want us to know that God does not tempt us, Say that. Say that. but he does test us. All right. All right. You may ask the question, Pastor Colors, what is the difference between a temptation and a test? Use it, Lord. Use it. Although God will sometime, not even sometime, I would say, although the situation will be the same. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how you view it. <laughs> I said it again. Right, the God. situation will be the same. Yes. It all depends, depends on how you view it. Yeah. Yeah. A temptation is being enticed to sin. Uh -huh. That's a temptation. That's right. To be enticed to sin. You should never say that God made you sin because he did not, and he does not. You can't say, well, the Lord put that pound cake in front of me, and I know that I did not need it. So the Lord knows if he didn't want me to have it, he should not put it in front of me. No, God does not tempt us like that. That's gluttony. So, so uh, although that cake was there, it was the devil that caused you to be tempted because you know that you were not hungry, so you yes. ate the cake in a way that is gluttony, that's a temptation, yes. so that is from Satan. Yeah. Now, a test is God trusting us to make the right choice. <laughs> yes, it is, Elder. We always talk about, as we should, Trusting in God. But I wonder, can God trust you? So a test is God trusting us to make the right decision. Throughout the Bible, you will see God testing his children. Adam and Eve. I told you the situation would be the same, but so let's look at the situation with Adam and Eve from two different perspectives. Let's look at it first as a temptation. We know that God told Adam, Adam, you can eat of any tree in this garden, in the garden of Eden. You can eat of any tree of the garden of Eden, but don't touch this tree in the middle. Don't eat of that fruit. But Satan came in a very uh, deceptive way and he tempted Adam and Eve. Uh -oh. He tempted Adam and Eve to eat of that fruit that God told them or eat of that tree that God told them not to. Satan tempted them. Alright. Temptation. But God say, I'm going to test you all. I'm going to test you, hallelujah, to make the right decision. God had already instructed Adam, you can eat of any tree in the garden. It's the same predicament, you follow me? It's the same situation. But God said, Adam, I'm going to trust you to make the right decision. It's the same predicament, but it depends on which perspective are you going to view the situation. All right, here we go. The second Adam, who is known as Jesus. The book of Matthew, chapter number four, if I'm not mistaken, it says, and the spirit of the Lord 
led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Mm. You can see a test in the temp and a temptation in that one verse. The spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. That's a test. All right. To be tempted. Here's the temptation. Here to be tempted of the devil. Whenever the Lord releases me to preach about this, the willingness, the word and the willingness, I thought it was going to be this Sunday, but he didn't release me. I can't wait to preach about that. I talked about it in Sunday school. I'm not, excuse me, in Bible study about the word and the willingness to know about the graphene and the logos and the rainbow using the word. Whenever the Lord released me to preach that, I can't wait, but he hasn't. So let me talk about this. <laughs> so God led the second Adam known as Jesus into the wilderness. And God said, I'm paraphrasing, I could not trust, I thought I could trust the first Adam, hallelujah, to make the right decision. But he did not make the right decision. So God said, I'm going to trust you, the second Adam, Jesus, to make the right decision. I'm going to take you through the same that I took the first Adam, but I want to know the second Adam, can I trust you to make the right choice? So the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness, I don't talk about that, to be tempted of the same predicament, same situation. Satan said, I'm going to use the same trials in the same tribulation that tempt you, that put temptation your way. And Satan knew that if he could get the second Adam, who is Jesus, to fall into temptation, God's plan will be over. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Same predicament. Yes. It all depends on which way you view it. My Lord. That's all right. I hear a lot of people say that COVID-19 is a plague. And when I hear people refer to COVID-19 as a plague, I think about when the Israelites were in Egypt. Mm. And God had to send 10 plagues mm. to Egypt mm. so Pharaoh could let his people yeah. go. Mm -hmm. And after the Lord sent that 10th plague, Pharaoh said, I want Moses, Aaron, all of the Israelites, you can go out of Egypt. Get out of here. So they went out of Egypt, but they end up in a wilderness before they got to the promised land. Now, if we're going to call COVID-19 a plague, now I want you to see what happened when the plague came to Egypt. They had the Pharaoh had to let the people go. But I want you to see where was the next step. In Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse number 2, it says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all, um, all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Mm. My Lord. Now, if we're going to call COVID-19 the plague, and if we're going to tell the government and Satan and whomever to let us go, and we're going to rebuke this plague, uh -huh. let me show you where was the next place they went. Uh -huh. They went into a wilderness speak, 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 speak. for 40 speak, years. Speak, speak, speak. All right. Now, here's the next part of that verse. It says, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Here we go. To humble you. Mm. And test you. Oh, I wish you would look at it. If you can't look at it now, look at it later. To humble you. And test you. Why did he lead them in the wilderness for 40 years to be tested? To know what was in your heart. That's the word. Whether you will keep his commandment 
it or not. I believe that most people are in a spiritual wilderness. I believe, I'm in there with you. I believe that all of us, if I can be honest, are in a spiritual wilderness. And the reason the Lord has us in this place to test us. Why is he testing us? To humble you. Yes, yes. That's the first part. Yes. Because some of us have been so, I'm going to say us. I'm going to put all of us yes. in the same storm. Yes. I'm going to put all of us in the same wilderness. Yes. Before COVID-19, some of us, all of us, excuse me, were so self-righteousness. Yes. Or righteous, we were arrogant. Yes. We thought we had it all together. You were prideful, and God said, "Okay, I've been trying to get your attention time after time after time after time after time. But when I finally got your attention, you want me to stop? You want this to go away? No, 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 no. I'm gonna make sure that I humble you under my hand." only to humble you but to test you and to see what is in your heart what's in your heart what's in your heart only the pure in heart shall see God I would rather go through this and find out that my heart was not pure than to have what I thought was a pure heart. Yeah. End up going to hell. And God showed me that all the time you were on earth, you did not have a pure heart. So God is sending us through this wilderness to test what is in our heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. He had, I, 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 no, I sound like a broken record by saying this almost every month, but God had to close the church doors yes. so you can take inventory yes. over your own self. Yes. If you are still worried about people in the church and the church doors are closed, God still doesn't have your attention. Your heart I was telling someone on the phone, I can't believe that people are still talking about people in churches. Yeah. And when the church doors are closed. When you were in church, I didn't have you when you were in church, you were looking at Elder Jones, you were looking at Minister Jacket Jones, you were looking at Lady C, you were looking at Sister Tara, Brother Justin, Sister Jacket, Brother Jeremy, you were looking at all those people. And the church was supposed to be about you. So you can take inventory over your own life. Going to repeat that saying this way. Yeah. Yeah. The word will get out. 
I want somebody to know that 2020 is a test. Now, I know I, I'm going to put myself in that boat, too. I know we got in 2020 <laughs> talking about a clear vision. But little that we know that God was on test our high side. He was going to take us into the I got the sinner. <laughs> and, and make sure we have some 2020 vision yeah, so we can see how God is so working. Yeah. So 2020 is a year that God tests us mm. and God entrusted us to make the right decision yes, regardless of the trial. Mm. And as I move through this story, I, I'm going to ask you to remember that it's only a test. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody shout, it's only a test. Only a test. Now, there's no test without contest. Therefore, allow me to put Job's life in its proper setting. It is challenging for me to preach or to teach just from one chapter of Job without talking about his entire life. The book of Job is the oldest book yes, of the Bible. Yes, <laughs> I'm reminded before Elder Jones came to our ministry, um, joined um, True Friendship, got under my tutelage. She thought she was going to trap me up once, one, one, to, one day. <laughs> and she said, Pastor, what's the oldest book of the Bible? <laughs> you remember the Elder Jones? <laughs> I said, Job. She said, well, this boy does know his stuff. <laughs> Job is the oldest book. Of the Bible. Many people would think Genesis is the oldest book of the Bible because it talks about the creation story and the way it is um, canonized. But however, Job is the oldest book yes. of, in the Bible. Yes. The book of Job is unique. It tells the story of a believer. The, Bible, the book of Job answers the question or answer the question that has been asked for centuries. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? And I believe that that is the theological essence of the book of Job. To explain to us why do bad things happen to good people. A lot of saved people, a lot of holy people, a lot of righteous people, a lot of people who had a heart for God died this year of COVID-19. And many people have scored, has many people have questioned God. Why? How can a person so holy and so righteous and live for the Lord, preach the gospel? How could they get COVID-19 and leave this world? And I believe if you really examine the book of Job, that Job, the life of Job, can somewhat answer that question. Mm -hmm. I don't have time, like I said, to preach this entire book because I really just want us to get to my uh, main scripture, Job 23.10. But let me talk about Job just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Job was a man from the land of us. The Bible described him as a perfect man. Now, that does not implied that he was perfect in our sense. Doesn't mean that he was sinless, but it means that he feared the Lord and he walked upright before God. Yes, right. Job was married. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was very wealthy. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yachts of old, um, Yolks of oxen, and the list goes on. It was evident that God's favor yes, was upon Job's yes, life. Yes, However, one day, Job's life changed. Yes, <laughs> one day when the sons of God, the heavenly beings, came to present themselves for the Lord, and Satan also showed up. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered it. The Lord has said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down on it, 
And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> that there's none like him on the earth, a blameless man. An upright man who fears God and turn away from evil. Yes. Then the Lord said, then Satan said to the Lord, excuse me, you have, have you not put a hedge around him, his house, and all that he has yes. on every side? Yes. Hmm. And I know that many people say this and we have made it a cliche but I really want you to hear this that Satan cannot do any more to you than God allows him before Satan even attacks us he must get divine permission from God you can see that I, I really can go so deep into that how Satan showed up with the sons of God, the heavenly being, to show us that sometimes Satan can even disguise himself. He can show up in many forms. You can think that this is from God, and sometimes it can be from Satan, because Satan know how to, uh, he's very conniving. He, he know how to deceive himself. So you have to be careful. You really have to make sure that you know who, who what is from God and what is from Satan, because Satan can disguise himself. So he showed up with heavenly being and told Satan, God told, um, Satan told God that I've been walking on the earth trying to find somebody to attack. Yes, sir. And God said, help you consider my servant, Job. <laughs> Satan said, I tried to do that, but you have a head of protection. Yes, yeah. And I want you just for the next 30 seconds to praise God that he has a hedge of protection around you. I want you to know that Satan cannot touch certain areas of your life. It is because God has a hedge of protection around certain areas of your life. And God would tell Satan, you can't touch that, but you can touch this. You can't do that, but you can do this. Why? Because I have a hedge of protection Bing 
would fail on all of his children. And after a while, for the other children that survived, the Bible let us know that a massive storm came. Lightning fell down from heaven and destroyed all of Job's sheep and servants. And the other family members that survived, the Bible let us know that a mighty wind came and destroyed the rest of Job's family. So what happened was, let's look at this. God removed the hedge from around Job's children and his wealth. Because sheep and camels and all that equals money. So his children are destroyed. His family is destroyed. And his money is gone. And Job said, hallelujah. He thought Job, I mean, Satan thought that he had Job. But Job said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked I will return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Hallelujah. Here's the exciting part, y'all. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you praise God? When your children are acting funny, when people in your family has passed away, when your money is gone, can you just say, blessed be the name of the Lord? Can you better praise the Lord at all times? It doesn't matter what goes on in your family. You may lose love Much weight. Uh -huh. 
And Job's wife came to him and said, why you just don't curse God and die? The Bible lets us know that Job did not curse God and die, but Job did curse the day he was born. Now that came very close to cursing God. But what Job did, he cursed the creation and not the creator. That's right. That's right. Yes. Then Job's friends heard about Job being sick. And Job's friends came over and said, Job, why do you just don't curse God? Get out of this. And curse God. And one of Job's friends said, Job, you know the real reason you're going through this. It's because you did something that's not pleasing in God's sight. What have you done to cause this to come upon you? And I want you to know this. I want you to write this down if you take a note. Sometimes there is no direct relationship between a person suffering and a person sin. Sometimes there, there is no direct relationship between a person suffering and a person sin. Don't think just because you're going through trials, you done did something. That's not pleasing to God's son. Say that. Say that. Mm -mm. There's no, there's sometimes there's a no direct relationship. I want you to know something. We really deserve to suffer in hell. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. And if we suffer in hell, you cannot be redeemed. Come on. Come on. But if you suffer here on earth, yes, hallelujah, yes, God can redeem. Y'all don't hear me. See, if you suffer in hell, you can't come back and get another trial. But if you suffer here on earth, endure hardness as a good soldier. If you suffer a little bit here on earth, God can redeem you. And one of Job's friends said, listen, I don't believe God really knows what he's doing. Does God know what he is doing? Some people may ask that question now. How can God allow all this to go on? Is God real? Does God know what he's doing? You have spent all those years in church, and you mean to tell me that God is doing this? Does God really know what he is doing? And Job said this. I like this. Bring us to our verse. He knows the way that I take. Yes, you know. When he tests me, uh -huh. I will come out yes. as pure gold. Yes. Somebody shout, it's only a test. It's only a test. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to hear this. When Job could not find God, he believed that God knew him. Yes. Mm. Show that, show that. When he could not find God, uh -huh. he believed Yes, that God knew him. Yes, I said yes, it again. I want yes, that yes. to get in your spirit. When he could not find God, yes. he believed yes. that God knew him. Yes, yes. And some of us have been asking God, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> uh, where are you? You haven't showed up yet. Where are you? Where are you, God? When are you going to show up? When are you going to take COVID-19 away? When are you to turn things around. Where are you? But when you cannot find God, you got to know that he still knows you. He was confident that God would recognize that he made the right decision. He was confident and he never knew that God recognized that he did not follow the way of the wicked. Job knew that his suffering was only a test. Yes. Yes. Job believed that his test would have results. Oh, yes, sir. He knew, Job believed that he knew that this test would only, hallelujah, develop his character yes. and give him an authentic relationship with God. Yes. Yes. I, want, I, I want you to really hear that. He knew that if he went through this test, he knew that it would bring him closer to God. 
Yes. He will have a deeper relationship yes. with God. Yes. Not only that, but it will work on his character. Yes. The reason we are going through this test because God wants a deeper, authentic relationship with us. We go through trials to make us strong. We go through tests to have a deeper relationship with God. We go through tests to work on our character. Yes. God, while you're working on my character during this test, mm -hmm. bring me closer bring to me you. Closer to you. Yes. Whenever we get back to our normal life, if we get back to it, as we know it before um, COVID, or whenever we get back to church, whenever we get back to wherever we, we, we go back to, Somebody should know that we have a deeper relationship with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody should know that. Somebody should know that you have been in the presence of a king. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Please hear me out. Please do not go through 2020 or get to the end of 2020 living the same life. Have a depleted spiritual life. If you do not pass this test, you're going to have to retake the test. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus. You, COVID-19, many of us had COVID-19. Then we had to go through a period called quarantine. And God had to put some of us on our bed of affliction so we can look up and say, God, you finally got my attention. Yeah, yeah. And some people don't pray until they get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And then for those of you who did not have quarantine, we went through a period that, that um, the, the, you're not, the um, United States shut down for a period of time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That you had to stay in your home. Yes. Can you see this? Can you see that God has been trying yes. To get our attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've been going through a test all 2020 mm -hmm. only because God wants you. Yes. Jesus. He wants a deeper relationship yes. with you. Yes. Job said he knows the way that I take. And when he had tested me, I shall come forward. As gold. Gold goes through six stages. Number one, the miners dig for gold in the earth. So miners that dig for gold in the earth. Miners dig for gold in the earth. God found us. God looked beyond all of our dirt mm -hmm. and our filth, and he found us mm -hmm. in the earth. That's number one. I want you to relate that to that. Number two, the next stage is they separate the gold from the other materials. Hallelujah. So after God found us, he told us to come out from among them yeah, and be separate. Hallelujah. You have to be separate from the other things of the world. Say that now. All right. Number three. Gold goes through the fire. Mm. The furnace must reach a temperature that exceeds 1,064 Celsius. That's hot. And when you go through a test, you're going through the fire. Hallelujah. I said, when you go through a test, you're going through the fire. Yeah, yeah. Number four, while the gold is in the furnace, other impurities are burned off. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All those other things that's in the, your character, all those other things that's yeah. in your life. Hallelujah. When you go through the fire, when you go through the fire, 
when you go through the test, it start burning off of you. Hallelujah. And God, whatever's in me, hallelujah, was ever in my spirit while I'm in this fire, while I'm in this test, please, Lord, burn it off of me. Hallelujah. All impurities, get it out of me. Get it out of my spirit. Get it out of my mind. Get it out of my soul. Get it out of me. The fifth step is after that, the gold is a liquid, but it is poured, poured into molds uh -huh. so it can get its shape. Hallelujah. Yes. God, after I go through the fire, yes. after all the impurities are burned off of me, yes. put me on the potter's wheel. Yes. And I want you to shape me. Hallelujah. I want you to mold me. Hallelujah. I want you to give me the shape that I need to be in. Hallelujah. And then after you go through that, the sixth stage is gold is turned into a jewelry. Yes, yes. And after you go through all those stages, the last stage uh -huh. is you shall come forth yes. as pure gold. Yes. Job said, I've been through all those stages. Uh -huh. And when God has finished testing me, yes. I shall come forth. Yes. As pure gold. Truly, truly, truly. 1 Peter chapter number 1 verse number 7 and I'm closing says that the trial of your faith uh -huh. being much more precious than of gold yeah. that perisheth yeah. though it be tried with the fire may it be found unto the praise yeah. and the honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord be pleased with my life. Yeah. Lord, I'm thankful that you did not kill me. That you did not call me home in the year 2020. I said it again. Lord, I am thankful that you gave me another opportunity to get it right. And God, I recognize that this is only a test. You know, not only could COVID-19 take us out, but a car accident, a heart attack. It, it doesn't matter. I know all of our attention is on COVID-19, but there are other things that could have taken us out. But I thank God that I didn't die during the test. I said, I thank God that I didn't die during the test. Work on me. Work on me. Draw me closer to you. Hmm. This last Sunday of 2020, everything that we've been through this year, God, I want to know you for myself. I want to have an authentic, deeper relationship with you. All of us have been through some tests this year. But I want to know how's your spirit? Are you better? Or are you worse? Hallelujah. God said, I'd rather for you to be hot or cold.
Work on me. Remove all impurities. Hallelujah. And Job realized that if he passed the test, not only would he come out as pure gold, but God would give him double. All of us want the double, but we don't want to go through the test. Let's get through the test first. Hallelujah. Let's get through the test first. Let God burn off those impurities. Let God work on your character. And then, once God mold you and shape you, then you will get the double. It's only a test. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, it's only a test. It's only a test. It's only a test. Has lifted all over the sanctuary. Has lifted on social media. As we prepare to sing. And I want to end this last service of 2020 in worship. There's no other name that has power than Jesus. There's no other name. And God wants you to get closer. Draw me closer, Lord. Draw me closer, God. I don't know what the year of 2021 is going to bring. But God, if you happen to call us home, I want you to be pleased with our worship. And when I say our worship, I'm not talking about what we're doing right now. Hallelujah. By lifting our hands. But I'm talking about our lifestyle. Let our life be a worship to you. Let our living be a worship to you. Draw me closer to you, Father. Draw me closer. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Every time you call that name, you get closer to him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus.
good. Come on. I want you to worship him. I want you to worship him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 True Friendship members, please check your emails for the information for our meetings of the mind tomorrow, December the 28th at 7 p.m. Please check your email. Well, before we go, it's something very important that we must do. If you don't know Jesus, let me introduce you to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. If you're not saved and you don't know 
that if you leave this word today, that you will go to heaven. I want you to pray. Say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. I am a wretch undone. Save me. I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died just for me. In your son, Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved. I encourage you to get into a church home. And if you don't find a church home, you are more than welcome to join our church family. Write us a letter and mail it to True Friendship Church, P.O. Box 741, Lincoln, Georgia, 30817, and we will be your church family. Until next Sunday, the first Sunday of 2021, grace and peace be unto you.